Hello again, this is DJ from GarageFarm.net Academy. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create an animation out of your still image artist scene. Just like this one. So we'll let some fresh air into our room, opening the window and letting in a gust of wind that will move our curtain. To achieve this effect, we'll be using cloth sim and force fields. And at the end of the tutorial, I'll be showing you how to increase the power of the computer using a GPU render farm. So here we are in Blender. This is a 2.81 uh, version, and uh, I created this scene using the Archipack add on and some assets from the 3DBIT store. You can use any kind of an uh, interior RGB scene of your own. Just make sure that you have curtains hanging uh, next to a window. The curtains are nothing fancy. If you want to create uh, them, I highly recommend uh, checking out my previous tutorial on creating this kind of uh, curtains but this time we'll be uh, animating them and making them even more interesting so in this tutorial i won't be covering uh, all of the other aspects of creating such a scene if you want to uh, dig into this kind of topic uh, so if you want some more inspiration or information about creating a detailed interior scene uh, check out our interior loft course that is on our channel and once you have a ready-made scene that's looking good as, as a steel shot you might want to lift it up a uh, level higher and introduce some uh, motion and animation and that's the scope of this tutorial I'm assuming that you have some kind of a curtain the mesh looks like that so if you go to tab to edit mode uh, you can see it's like moderately dense, so it has some polys, but it's not super high poly. So this is an important thing to definitely balance out. Uh, the cloth simulation is very fragile to number of vertices because it really calculates the position of all the vertices in the mesh. So if you have a pretty high poly mesh, definitely will look better or generate like more accurate results. But then it can take a lot of time to get straight to the point. Let me show you how the end result will look like if you play the animation. And you can see that the wind is moving the curtain a little bit, so it's not just like a still one, just like this one in the foreground. You can see that the movement is not very pronounced, it's just a slight you know, a morning breeze kind of movement, so that, that was the calm mood I wanted to achieve. First, uh, to make the curtain behave like a curtain, let's add the cloth in the physics tab. So uh, you can see it already applied a modifier here as well. Uh, but we'll be using the physics tabs as the, all the settings are really here. So let's scroll down. I'll generally recommend the setting uh, the quality steps a little bit higher because the default default five mm, is quite low a setting like calculates faster it all depends on the power of your CPU generally because the calculations are made on the CPU um, and, but generally we are going for quality this time we leave all the basic settings by default but uh, what we're interested in is the pin group I'll just press slash to go into singular view so nothing distracts us and go to the edit mode and I'll just select these upper this upper edge here and add a new vertex groups which I'll name pins right and I need to click assign so that these vertices that are selected are assigned to the vertex group so now if I deselect and select once again you can see it's set up correctly and these are set up with weight of one vertex groups can be really smoothly applied with weight painting so some vertices are kind of like partially affected by the vertex group uh, but we want these to be totally pinned and the other ones uh, just freely hanging so this will do for our purpose we have this vertex group so we have to assign this here in the shape panel so going down below in the shape panel we have the pin groups here and we set up the pins with a stiffness of one so these vertices won't move at all so now when we play the animation we can see it's hanging there yeah when we look over here we can see that it pierced through the floor and also through the windowsill here so uh, it didn't uh, it wasn't affected by, by any other mesh 
in the scene, and that's not what we want. We want a realistic simulation. So uh, for that, we need to uh, we need to set up some collision objects uh, so that uh, so that Blender knows that. <clears throat> that these objects are meant to interact with our cloth. The floor must be such an object. Right now we won't go into the settings, we'll just set up the collisions. So let's set up one for our walls, maybe also this uh, this trim here. So everything that you know, might collide with our mesh. And for sure this chair needs a collision object. Yeah, I think that's enough. Now we could set up also the the rug here but i think it's not really possible that the mesh will come close to this yeah i think we're fine and now let's play the simulation once more and right now if you take a closer look here it collides with uh, with the floor already so it's kind of like hanging and laying down on the floor and i really like this effect with the curtains of course you could you could trim them so that they are shorter and freely hanging over the floor and that's perfectly fine as well that's just a matter of taste okay so now we have our curtain done let's uh, make sure that our window is open let's position our cursor somewhere, somewhere around here and just shift a add a force field and we'll add a wind you can see it's just a bunch of circles uh, and the spacing of these circles is a kind of a visual um, representation of how strong the wind force field is this has also an arrow showing the direction of the wind and now let's rotate it 90 degrees we can also scale it so that we can see where we really want this wind I'd really like to position it somewhere around here, so I'll just snap it. Selection to cursor, I'll move it to the middle of, of our opening. If you leave the setting default, the wind is really, really set to a low value, so we'll crank that up to 500 to be a, kind of like a gentle breeze. You can go crazy with, uh, even at 5000 or stronger. Uh, right now you can see that there's just one circle here visible because the other ones are pretty far away it shows that it is a stronger wind and i found that these kind of values work let's see how our wind interacts with the curtain right now yeah on the first frames it's hard to notice that but you can already see it's kind of pushing it in the direction of the chair here And because we set up the chair as a collider, it's going to interact with the chair as well. So let's pause it here. What you can already see here is that the mesh is intersecting itself. That might cause some errors and generally it won't look realistic, you know, like the curtain was able to pass through itself. If it's a thing that's viewed from far away, you might get away with that, but we want to uh, do this the proper way. So to get this done right, let's also enable self-collisions. There's a friction to be uh, calculated, so when the mesh is colliding with itself, how, how much friction is there? So is it like sliding, like silk cloth, causing little friction, or is it something more rough? And then there are settings of the collision distance. These are quite important settings uh, in terms of calculating the self-collisions. You'll see that it might cause some errors, but there is no universal setting for every single cloth mesh that uh, there is. So it's kind of related to the scale of your mesh. The important thing is the distance between each vertex, because the, the positions of vertices and the collisions between uh, different parts of mesh are calculated with this kind of a threshold distance. So let's run it with the self-collisions right now. You can see it's already a bit slower. Right, and then you can see that the mesh might go crazy. So this is dependent on the settings of this uh, distance. And there's also the impulse clamping. Uh, it also might help preventing some, some strange behaviors of, of the cloth like this. There you go. I'd say that's a nice tree trunk. What's going on here? Why is there a
here's the final settings after after many tweaks that I've come up with uh, for the cloth simulations. So the quality steps is 10, the, the collisions quality is set to 4, and I've set the object collisions to 0 0.005, and I've also increased the impulse clamping. Uh, this helps preventing some like unexpected movements when colliding with other objects or, or with itself. So I've increased this to 0.5, and it seemed to like take care of all this strange jittering of, of cloth. I've increased uh, the wind force a little bit to a uh, thousand and it seemed to work work quite fine for me so let me play back how it looks like. See it's nicely folding getting some collisions with our chair just like that but we won't be viewing this from this angle but somewhere like, like from here yeah, it's nicely moving and waving just left just the way I want it but as you might see it uh, takes quite a lot of experimentation and you know tweaking a value here value there and yeah I've also decreased the friction with self collisions that that it was causing also a little bit of too harsh behaviors when colliding with itself so that might give you a nice starting point for your experiments, but as I said, uh, this may differ from scene to scene and from object to object, uh, so you have to be aware that these, all these settings are kind of relative to what you're applying them to. Now for the last part of the tutorial, I'll show you how to quickly animate the camera movement to get a nice shot of our scene. So. Here I got a camera set up to a nice still shot and it looks like this as a still image but I want to uh, introduce this as an animation so um, this is kind of the effect that I'm going for a smooth movement of the camera inside the room towards the curtain that is animated Okay, so let's have a look on how to do that. But first, let's position the cursor by pressing Shift S uh, and cursor to select it. So we have our, our cursor in the origin of our camera. And now let's add a curve. It can be any kind of a curve. So perhaps let's add a path. What we want is to uh, have the beginning of the path as the origin of the path. So let's set the origin to 3D cursor. Let's now move this this cursor here and Shift S position the selection to cursor. So right now we have the origins of the camera and the path in the same place. Let's uh, edit the curve a little bit. So let's select it once more and just like that we can you can see we can select points of the curve and just change the direction we want the camera to move I think it's a little bit too sharp right now so let's do this like that and of course these control points of the curve will uh, you know, the, the distance between them and the sharpness of the angles this, this will define movement of our camera in the end right now you can see it's on a, on a level so we won't be moving the camera up and down anyhow you can see this, uh, there's a nice, nice curve here. So let's pick our camera right now. And to connect this, we'll add an object constraint. And, and for that, we will use a relationship constraint for our camera. And this will be follow path. Now we have to pick the path that we want the camera to follow. So let's take the eyedropper and but as you might see the camera was displaced so to fix that we'll just go to the item settings and just reset by pressing alt and all of the values reset them to zero and that will fix the displacement and now if you play back the animation you'll see that nothing is going on we'll press animate path and now 
can see that the camera is moving along the path just like on a truck let's have a look through the camera and that's kind of the effect that we're going for now if you want to tweak the movement of the camera you just need to tweak the nerves path now I would like this camera to move uh, from the first frame starting at the beginning of the curve to the last frame that is the frame 200 but right now you can see it stops at frame 100 so uh, where to find this setting select the curve and go down to the path animation panel and here you can see that there is a setting for frames so how many frames uh, is this path going to be, be animated on and we'll change that to 200 just as we want it this is the length of our shot let's have a look how it behaves right now so if you want to tweak it uh, just change the position of specific parts we can also use this kind of fall off if you want to do that smoothly I like that better and you can see it adapts to the path automatically so it's quite a convenient way of controlling the camera and that's it guys we're pretty much ready to send it to the render farm so I'll be rendering this uh, to 300 samples and set up the global illumination to a large amount of bounces so I get a nice global illumination effect and, and I'll set the output to open EXR multi-layer and that's just because I want to have some passes for the for the post-production time to render out our scene to get the render done fast I'll use new garage farm GPU farm so let's switch the render engine to GPU let's just use our plugin which will send our scene straight from blender one thing I need to remember is setting the output file so let's go here to output properties and set up the path let's just beam it up and you'll see how fast it goes it will send our file all the link textures everything straight to the farm servers so the file has been uploaded we just need to click here to submit our job you can set up the priority if you're in a hurry you can set it to high but the the higher the priority is the more the more pricey the render will come out so i'm not in a hurry i'll stay with the low and go for attractive price then we can submit the job already starts acquiring the nodes so we just need to wait a little bit until it renders and when it does the, the render beamer app will automatically download the ready frames to our hard drive so the animation rendered pretty quickly just in a few hours and with a little bit of post-production it looks like this And the pricing was also reasonable so average per frame I paid 75 cents which is pretty competitive compared to other rendering services and even our own CPU rendering for Blender so if you have an urgent project with a tight deadline for a client it's definitely worth expanding your computing power with a GPU service like ours and that's it for this tutorial I hope you liked it and found some useful information in it if you liked it give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to get notified whenever new releases come out and see you in the next tutorials